Hello and welcome back, this is DMAC um, and today I'm going to do a little video on this fella here. So this is a bi-lock uh, mortise cylinder um, which is an Australian lock, it's a high security lock um, and they're pretty rare over here in England um, but fortunately um, Dan off of Facebook uh, contacted me last week to say that some had popped up on eBay um, and I managed to get this one. So this one comes without a key now initially I thought that's not really going to be a problem because you know we don't need no stinking keys as Bosnian Bill was always fond of saying. Um, so what I thought was well, what I can do um, is I can just disassemble the lock and progressively pin it. Now these are pretty tricky to pick. I think um, what you've got is six rows of, they're not pins, I think they're actually sliders but they do feel like pins um, when you pick them by all accounts. Um, so you've got, you know, well, you can just see there we've got one row there and one row there. So we've got 12 pins or sliders uh, to pick to get this open and then there's two sidebars here and here. We've got false gates in there. So it's a, it's a pretty tricky lock and it's probably, you know, a bit above my level, but uh, I'm going to have fun trying to get into it. So I thought I don't need a key because what I can do is just take this off, strip it apart and then I can progressively pin it, which I do with a lot of locks to learn them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I could sort of, you know, take out all of the pins and the sidebar on one side and just start with, you know, perhaps the left side and put a couple of pins in and just get a feel for how they pick. Um, so anyway, I, I received the lock and um, took the back off and went to pull the, pl pull the plug out and it, and it didn't come out at all. Uh, quite often with sidebar locks, um, the sidebars locate into grooves on the um, actual body here. And you know, once you've taken off that cam, that cam's usually holding it in place, and you can then push the cylinder through, and it will just come straight out, um, which is what I expected with this one. But that didn't happen, and and try as I might, I wasn't able to uh, to get it out. So I thought, well, uh, you know, perhaps I need to uh, see if I can fashion a key. So I did a couple of YouTube searches on this. I, I didn't know anything about this when I bought it, so I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and chatted to a few people. Um, and I came across a video by Rookie Lock, um, which is quite an old video. I'll, I'll see if I can link that down below. And he made a key um, for it, and I thought, well, that's got to be you know a great idea. And the more I looked into it, um, there were people saying that you could make a bi lock key. A bi lock key is like a U shape, and then you've got two different rows of bitting um, that operate independently. That you could make uh, a key out of uh, a credit card. And I thought, well, that sounds like a really uh, interesting uh, prospect. And I figured that if I could make a key, a working key, and then perhaps the, the, the core turns a little bit, and then I'd be able to pull it out. Um, so that is the plan for today. Um, so I contacted the seller, who happened to be Aspie Lockpicker, um, who I, uh, I didn't realize it was him when I bought the lock, but um, it was great. And we had a, we had a little bit of a, a, a chat back and forth. And he was selling a few of these um, buy locks and some of them he had working keys for. This one was sold without a working key, so I got it a bit cheaper. But he was able to send over uh, these photos. Uh, and they're really great because they're side on. And you can see that's the uh, left row of bit in there and that's the right row of bit in there. So I figured, you know, I could, you know, perhaps try and duplicate it from the photograph. Um, fortunately, I've got some design software that uh, will help me along with this. Um, but what I needed was uh, a couple of dimensions, so I, I put a post up on the um, LPU Discord just asking for a couple of dimensions that would enable me to scale off of this photo. And hopefully um, what that will do is I, I can then get a drawing that, I can, uh, that, that would be scaled up um, and then I can use that to cut some credit card keys. So that is the plan for today. So I've got a little uh, card here, um, not a credit card, but similar kind of material. Um, and I'm going to use that, hopefully, to make a key for this. And uh, in doing so, that's going to mean that we can remove this plug. Um, and that gets me, it gets me to a position where I can progressively pin it. Um, but it also gets me to a position um, where I've, I've got a known bit in for the key. Now making a, a, a card, sorry, making a key out of a credit card is not going to last very well and I, I, I don't want to sort of um, uh, ju just do that. But once I've got that bit in, I know the bit in works enough to get the core out, um, I can then refine that bit in if it needs it um, and from that make a working key. Now, Rookie Lock, when he made his working key, he used a section of copper pipe, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably do a two-part video. So the first part, uh, 
this video is going to be me making a key based on this photograph scaling it up using my design software and then transferring that scale drawing over to this card and hopefully that means we can get this plug out so uh yeah should be an interesting video um and i've got my fingers crossed and it sounds like it could be a quite exciting project um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to head over to the uh, computer import these photographs and then I'm going to make a vector drawing of all of this bit in and see if I can kind of cobble it all together and uh, find a way to transfer that over um, to this card. Uh, I've got a vinyl plotter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the bit in onto, this is the plan, I'm going to plot the bit in onto, onto a vinyl sticker. And I can stick that sticker onto here um, and then I can cut it out and hopefully that key will work. So stay tuned and uh, fingers crossed. Right, so I'm over at the computer now. Um, I've got my two images uh, of the Bylock key that were sent to me by the seller. And fortunately, he's taken them a really nice side on, and we can see all of the cuts on the key there. And I've got both sides. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the measurements that I was given on Discord uh, for the, you know, the height here and the length here, um, and then scaled that up to produce these. So we've got this box here um, and that is scaled up to the size that I was given of the bylock keys. Um, and then from that I've uh, taken these uh, uh, vertical lines here uh, spaced out equally shown by these boxes and that should give me the position of the cuts of the pins. So what's essential is the, the lower depths here, the cuts of the pins um, and it's that height that's critical for it to open. Um, the upper upper one, it doesn't really matter, that's just to kind of separate the pins and, and make sure that they locate uh, perfectly in these uh, lower kind of cuts. So yeah, what I've done is, you know, use lots of uh, <clears throat> guidelines there to make sure that all the cuts are equally spaced uh, vertically and horizontally. Sorry, just going out of focus. And I've done that on both keys. This one here at the top, has been flipped around just so I can line up all of the cuts to make sure that the top, uh, sorry, the left and the right cuts are all, all in line. Um, from that, I've been able to uh, make these two shapes. So this is version one. I'm hoping um, we've got our left uh, left cut there and we've got the right cut there. So I'm hoping that these are going to be to scale and uh, all of these cuts will work. But there's only one way to find out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these out of vinyl. Fortunately, I've got access to a vinyl plotter um, <clears throat> and that will enable me to cut these shapes out of vinyl. I can then stick that onto the credit card and we can cut it out and see uh, if it works. So I'm going to uh, export this over to the um, vinyl plotter and we will see uh, if it works. Right, over at the vinyl plotter, the job is queued up and ready to go. So I'm going to hit the go button. This is going to cut out several uh, templates uh, for the bylock keys. And that should enable me to play about with those and, and get the one that works. So let's get this going. Right, that's everything cut. So I'm going to get this, uh, tear this strip off here that it's made the cuts to, and I'll show you how we get the uh, shapes out of there. Right, so I've got the uh, strip that I've just taken off the plotter, and what that does, it cuts through this top layer and not into the bottom layer there. So if I peel this back, we take off that top layer, revealing all of the shapes uh, that the plotter has cut out for us. So that should be um, the correct uh, keys um, for the bylock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, stick them on the credit card, and I can cut them out, and we can see uh, see if they work. Quite exciting, isn't it? So I have our vinyl stickers, and that's got 
of bitting on it that we've just uh, cut out on the plotter. So I'm going to stick these uh, onto this card now. And let's zoom you in a bit. Um, and what I'm going to do, we've got this, this is the, the bottom edge um, of the key. So I'm going to stick that straight along the edge of the credit card here. So uh, we don't have to make that cut. So let's grab that one there. Carefully. Okay, we've got one stuck down. I'll grab the next one. I think I might put this up here. Not quite lined up that one. It's difficult to see. Ooh. It's difficult to uh, to see that edge because it's kind of white. So let's do on this edge instead. Okay, we are on our way. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, that looks pretty good there. So, um, right, I'm going to get to cutting this out. What I'll probably do is speed up this section of the video because it's probably going to be quite long and boring. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll cut all this out. Got my scalpel there. Got my ruler there. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll um, be enough to get this cut out and we can have a working key. So we have got our keys cut out from our credit card now. Uh, went pretty well using the knife to cut those out. Um, the only thing I did do off camera um, was I was I just wanted to check that they fit in there, um, and the this section here was a bit too tall um, to to slide in comfortably. And I think that might be because if you look at the bottom, um, there's a there's kind of a radius on those bottom corners. So I think. Although I'd measured the height maybe correctly because the keys have got to be slightly twisted, or these ones do, um, to fit in there. They didn't quite fit in there. So I've just shaved about half a mil off with the uh, knife and the ruler off of both of these keys um, to get it to, to sit in there. So now is the moment of truth to see if, uh, see if these work. Um, so what we're going to do is pop these in. I don't want to keep taking them in and taking them out because they're, they're, you know, they're really flimsy, especially that low cut there on three so i'm going to put them in um, we're not going to have the strength let's pop this in and they go in there really nicely they seem to locate pretty well um then we're not going to have the strength on these flimsy bits of uh, bits of credit card to be able to turn it if we do we're going to put stress on them um, so what i'm going to do is clamp up um, the cam uh, in the vise and uh, then we should be able to use that to kind of uh, to turn it. The other thing with this one, this is a Gen 2, and what that means is just up there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little button um, which needs to be lifted. So I think that's uh, from the videos I've seen, you press that down and there's a little kind of uh, lug which blocks the sidebar. Uh, and unless you press that down, um, you're not going to be able to get the open. So um, I think the key has like a little, it's got like a little hook or something on it. And as you put it in, it pushes that little button up. So 
we're just going to have to pick that one pin uh, essentially to, to, to get the open. So let's get this. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is in anticipation of getting it open is I'm going to take this cam off and then assuming we get it open that enable us to slide this plug out without any faff um, and without having to uh, or without accidentally uh, locking it back up again so I should be able to clamp onto that, that little lug just there um, and we can hopefully get him open so I'm going to clamp that in the vise very thin a thin section on the back of that uh, plug okay so that's I'll zoom you in a bit so that plug is clamped in and so by rotating the, the the cylinder body we should be able to get the open so these are all in sitting flush where they need to be It's going to be there's going to be a, an element of luck in this because obviously the key's not going to be perfect but there we go we have got the open awesome um right uh right to get this zoom you out i'm impressed that opened so quickly um so i've been told to get this plug out we need to have it in like the two o'clock position which is roughly where that is um and it should should come out all right, if I take these keys out, hopefully they won't snap in there. Oh, they would snap in there, wouldn't they? Yeah, I can't take the keys out because the sidebars are forcing that together and that is hold those little pins or sliders are holding this key down, so I can't take those out. So that's the top and we're in the, that's like the two o'clock position, isn't it? But he's not coming out. I've watched a lot of videos um, on these and I watched one where Daz Evers picked one of these he didn't have a key and he couldn't get the plug out um, when he did it either I don't really want to lock it back up again so I was told I was having a chat with um, do not duplicate on on discord and he gave me a lot of information on this told me it was a gen 2 and a QCC which I think stands for quick change core um, which I'm hoping that's what this is. There we go. I think we're out. Yeah, we're out. So the um, hold on. Let's get this so that nothing falls apart. I'm not seen inside these before. So we've got the two side bars. And that cam section is separate. Okay. All right, if I release those sidebars, we should be able to get our keys back out. Easier said than done. And there we go, that is our core. Um, so I think these sidebars are kind of crimped in. You've got these little crimps here, so they're captive. And, and there's our little rows of pins or sliders. Excellent. And the videos I've seen, you, you pull this cover off and then you've got access. You just see the, the springs under there. You've got access to the springs and you can take the sliders out, but I think the sidebar stays in. So, awesome. So what I'm going to do now is... Um, I think that enables me to kind of progressively pin this, knowing that I can I can take it out. But more importantly, I think what I'm gonna what the plan is, as I said in the beginning, now that I know that these keys work, um, based on that photo, I'm impressed that scaled up. Um, what I can do is create a working key um, out of a uh, copper pipe as in Rookie Lock's video. So what he did, I think he got, a, a, you got, you got the tube, the copper pipe tube, just a small section, and he cut it down the middle, rolled it out flat, hammered it all, and then he shaped it into the Bylock uh, shape key, 
which is it's kind of, as you can see from the keyway, it's like U-shaped. Um, so yeah, we need to make, you know, put two bends in it and then cut in that bit in. And I should be able to either use these or the, um, uh, the vinyl we cut earlier, stick that on the side of the copper um, and then cut it out. I think he said it was very difficult to, to cut that out. I mean, this is quite easy to cut. It's like a PVC and I could do that with a knife, but if we're using copper, it's gonna be uh, a, lot of a, a, lot, a lot difficult to do. But that is going to be part two uh, of this uh, video series on making a key for a bylock. I'm really impressed this worked, actually. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we've got... Just trying to look in there to see what we've got. So we've got uh, the sidebar recesses are just there. I don't know if you can see. And then we've got, um, we've got four kind of notches there. Um, and I think these ball bearings are part of that quick change system. So those two are fixed. And then those ones on the bottom, they're loose. Like that. So I think you have to insert the correct key and the correct key's got a slight dimple on it and they go in. And that allows you to change the core and then put a new core in. It's a really nice system, I've seen the videos on it. But I think, yeah, if we pick that, we picked that to the two o'clock position, so it was like that. So those ball bearings there, which are fixed, they're not sprung. When you pick it, uh, pick it or turn it to the two o'clock position, then one can slide out through that channel there, if you can see that, and one can slide out through that channel there. And then we've got two more. So I would have thought you'd be able to slide it out if it was in the sort of, uh, 10 o'clock position as well. Anyway, it's an awesome lock. Uh, I'm really pleased to, that, that these keys worked and I'm gonna start scratching my head on how to do part two of this video so that I can get a working key. But even if that doesn't work out, the way I see it, I've managed to get this plug out and I can progressively pin it now um, and kind of learn how to pick it. So uh, really looking forward to doing that. Great lock, very interesting mechanism, and a new one on me. Um, thanks to Do Not Duplicate on uh, Discord for giving me uh, the heads up on you know how this all kind of comes apart, and you know the the videos that I've seen on YouTube uh, that other people have uploaded to kind of get me this far. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to make that working key, upload a part two to this video, and I'll have a working key for this bylock, which will be absolutely fantastic, a fun project to do. Anyway, thanks for watching and. Uh, Stay safe. Bye for now.